there's going to be big programs the second of December, January here in Denmark. I thought they were doing a documentary about the last reformation, but they have done a documentary where they talk about other ministries that have gone really wrong in Denmark. We will uh, go to America and we will be there more. We will actually be five months in America next year, all in all. I really enjoyed your last video. I'm happy to hear you're going to the United States. There, I will be able to really take care of you and your ugly cult. You destroyed Alice's life. You were a sick person, and I warned you, I will take care of your cult. As long as Alice won't be able to get back to her therapy and live a normal life, I will be on your back. Previously on our series, we have revealed compelling evidence that the TV program God's Best Children was not an honest portrayal of Torben and his ministry. It was rather a calculated attempt to discredit him. The goal is to bring Torben and his ministry down. They tried to get what they wanted through politics by proposing new laws that were tailor-made to target Torben. Many of you have probably followed the documentary God's Best Children and seen how a preacher commits demonic exorcisms in front of shaking and crying children. We agree with children's condition that this kind of behavior can be described as psychological abuse. They also twisted the truth by misusing existing laws. We have asked a number of health commissioners to watch TV2's hidden recording of Torben Sondergaard. It's simply quackery. It is deeply, deeply worrying. Another tactic used was linking Torben with convicted criminals, which caused public outrage against him across the country. This man is downright dangerous, and what he practices should be illegal. In an attempt to discredit him further, they offered him a large sum of money, hoping to trap him financially. Torben Sondergaard, a pastor from Denmark, is being detained in Florida without any formal charges. With this video series, we want to make you aware of his case, and we will show you evidence that there is a fight going on, a fight over the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is an incredible story where things are not always what they seem. In this episode, we will show you that Torben is actually being persecuted for his faith in Jesus Christ. To be persecuted means to harass or punish in a manner designed to injure, grieve, or afflict. Jesus said, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Paul is saying in one of his letters, Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Should we be surprised when this happens? Peter answers, Do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. When we follow Jesus Christ and want to live a godly life, we will get trouble. It's a promise. But the things that are happening to Torben is that actually Christian persecution? Or is it merely that he made mistakes and he has to face the consequences? To answer these questions, let's first look at how Jesus was persecuted. Jesus went around doing good, but he also offended many people. He hurt the religious leaders in their pride, and they gradually became more and more agitated with Jesus and ultimately wanted to kill him. Jesus had many followers, but he had an inner circle of 12 people. However, one of these 12 turned against him. The reasons for this could have been greed, disappointment, jealousy, or even pride. As it's written, Satan entered into him, and he became an instrument of the enemy to destroy Jesus. After Judas handed Jesus over to the religious leaders, these leaders took him to the authorities. By applying pressure, the religious leaders convinced the authorities to make an unjust decision. To maintain peace, they decided to execute Jesus. But it's important to see that it's Satan who is working out his plans. The battle is not against the government or against these religious leaders. The battle is spiritual. 
In Ephesus it is written, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now you may say, wait a minute, how can you compare Torben to Jesus? Torben was not persecuted. He was simply portrayed in a negative way in a TV program. Was that not his own fault? Shouldn't he have been more cautious and not collaborated with that production company? Well, there's more to the story that you need to know to fully understand the situation. We need to take you back to 2016. That was the year when Torben's ministry released a powerful film called The Last Reformation, The Beginning. I was tired of looking for answers and I could not find it anywhere. This film gained significant worldwide attention and inspired numerous people to follow Jesus. However, it was also the year when a fierce battle began. The forces of darkness began to fight back. So how did this battle unfold? We need to introduce you to two individuals who have been relentlessly attacking Torben since 2016, and their campaign continues to this day. They've been operating anonymously all these years. They discredited Torben and his ministry while remaining hidden from public view. But their false narrative has been spread everywhere through the mouths of other people. The first of these individuals is a citizen of Denmark and a former friend of Torben who had an important position in his ministry. We won't use his real name here because we're not out for revenge or to damage anyone's reputation. Let's call him Thomas. I came to Denmark in 2015 together with my family. Um, we lived there for uh, over a year. We worked um, yeah, with Torben at that time uh, in his organization. And uh, we there also met this man. He was a very good listener and he was someone who pulled a lot of information from people. Very charismatic, um, but someone who just managed to come alongside just about anybody and get them talking and um, seemed to be somebody that was really nice, uh, seemed very interested in people. And um, my first instinct was to really like him. And uh, I, I felt sorry for him when he told me some of the stories of his life. And um, yeah, we became friends, I guess. I met him and I connected very good with him. I actually became good friends with him. And I remember uh, getting really close to him. I like to work with this man. Uh, we had good times together. I had good, I have good memories of him. In the beginning, he was actually a really nice person. In that way, he was really involved by helping a lot where he helped Torben, he helped other people, including helping me. He's a very intelligent person and um, someone that, if he's working for somebody, would be an amazing ally really uh, very clever and one step ahead of everybody. Uh, and if he wants to achieve something or get something done, he would. He was a very likable person. He was funny, he was very intelligent. Um, he had multiple talents, he was good in basically everything. You would ask him to do, he would do it. Uh, extremely intelligent um, and uh, shrewd. Very shrewd, very shrewd, very intelligent. I believe that when he came at first, he was very sincere. He was very sincere with everything. He, he, he loved what was going on at TLA. He loved the way God was moving. Uh, I believe God was touching him as well. And you could see that he was changing. Uh, and he, he would go out on the street, you know, join the kickstarts and everything. And it was amazing with him. But however, after I think around a year, um, things started to change with him. But there was another side of him or another character of him which I did not see in the beginning, but I saw later on that he was also very, very a manipulative person. And because that he was very manipulative, where he was really, he was actually really good at manipulate people and manipulate situation. And for that reason, he really gained a very quickly high position at that place at the Jesus Hotel 
where he almost somehow you can say he became uh, like the, the right hand of Torben at that time. Torben, yeah, really liked him and trusted him. So he gave him positions and, and access to, to basically everything um, at TLR. And some of those people he was not happy about, he often went to Torben behind their back uh, where he somehow started to gossip and he tried to manipulate uh, uh, about them to Torpen that uh, they are they are they have a problem or they need to be sent home and all this kind of stuff. And because of this, he often succeed that the, the, some of those co-workers were being sent home because of him. I would say it's not normal behavior to manipulate so many layers deep, um, and it does make that person very powerful in what he's able to achieve if he wants to tear somebody down. And I did witness some people being torn down, but it's it's very hard when you're in it sometimes to see it. Uh, he'd expressed it, he'd said it, that he was actually jealous of anybody that got close to Torben. And so he would remove people who got close or manipulate them either one way or the other. He would often complain that he have done, he did a lot, but he didn't get enough credit for what he did. Um, and that was basically because, I mean, Torben was the main guy on the videos and Torben was the one also preaching when there was a kickstart. And this guy was small in the behind the scene. So he pulled me aside one evening. He felt like there was not enough of credit given to him a given to him a, like a place to live a nice place to live he was um, bitter and angry um, and complaining a lot because of that at some point this man really started to work against Torben uh, he started to talk really bad about him uh, but at the same time he showed Torben a really nice face so Torben had no idea he thought this was my my best friend someone who's helping me a lot but to other people, he would say things like, Torben hurt me a lot. And he started to, to, to try to convince other people how bad Torben actually is. And he would actually manipulate the situation in such a way that Torben was at one point removed from his own organization. It was almost like he wanted me to hate Torben as well. It was almost like he wanted me to turn my back on Torben as well and join his side. And I found out later on that he would do the same to other people, that he would also talk um, to them bad about Torben. And then as soon as Torben would come in or enter into the room, he, he changed and he was suddenly, uh, I mean, very uh, sweet. So at some point, Torben found out that this man was actually causing a lot of these problems. And he decided to, to remove him from the organization. I got a call from a friend. He said, hey, if Torben is going to fire this man, please make sure to change all your passwords because he will take revenge. And I was like, nah, it's, I, I couldn't believe it because I was like, it will not be this bad. I, I thought I knew this man quite a bit, but he said, no, it's really bad with this man. You have to do this. So I was okay, if you say so. And actually I didn't believe it, but I changed a lot of passwords, um, but I didn't to take it so seriously. A few months later, uh, I found out that I actually forgot to change some passwords and some really important ones. So someone logged in into our systems and basically deleted everything they could find to destroy or to delete. So that day we lost all our websites, we lost a lot of domain names um, in different accounts and it was a big disaster. Uh, I think there was more than a year of work completely uh, destroyed. And for me personally it was like how can someone be so evil because I spent so much time myself already in, in all these these things and just deleting everything and, and destroying everything, including the backups, because the backups were also included in the system. Of course, I, I cannot prove that it was this man, but I know one thing that I was warned beforehand to change all the passwords because he would take revenge. And then later this happens. It's, it's a funny thing that sometimes our strengths uh, can become our weaknesses spiritually. You know, the, the thing that we have a really strong call in can also be, if it's turned inward, rather than toward God, if it's turned inward, it can become something very destructive because we've got a lot of perhaps uh, 
skill or, or talent that's been given in, that, in those areas. So I see that with uh, this, this gentleman. It's a very sad thing because here's somebody who wanted desperately to amount to something big in the kingdom. And instead of that has found himself involved in something really bitter and quite twisted. And that's sad. That's, that's a terrible thing. And I think that's also why God allows things to happen as long as he does, because he loves us. He loves us dearly. He loves our enemies as much as he loves us. I've still, you know, I, I still care a lot for this guy. I pray for him and I hope that he will turn to God. So that's my hope. But something else happened that same year. A lady we will call Alice comes to faith in Jesus Christ. She has a boyfriend. Let's name him Gabriel. Gabriel is a businessman of French nationality. When he hears that Alice is going to one of Torben's schools, he doesn't like it because he doesn't believe in God and hates Christianity. On top of that, Alice decides to break up with Gabriel because the relationship is not good. We called a friend of Alice who was with her during Torben's Bible school. I remember that this guy, he was actually married with another woman and that my friend was with him over a couple of years, and which means they were having an affair. And from that moment on, he stalks her. So this guy, he thought that she has gone into a sect and he was kind of searching everything what he could uh, from the ministry. And he was very much against this because he kind of lost her because of her faith in Jesus. And he wanted kind of to take her out of this uh, and so that he could have her back. What I understand is that he became someone that would persecute the whole uh, ministry with everything he could. He was very much against it. The staff and fellow students of that school received friend requests through Facebook from a Christian lady with the name of Olivia Tannenbaum. The account spread false information about Torben and his ministry and repeatedly used the word cult to address the ministry. But no one seemed to know her. Alice realizes that this Olivia Tannenbaum is actually her ex-boyfriend, Gabriel. It is Gabriel who is spreading this misinformation. Yeah, I remember some of the profiles that uh, all of a sudden was friend with everyone that we knew. The things that were shared on the profile, it was very much against Torben. So much hate, so much bashing. We asked Alice if she wanted to cooperate with this episode but she declined because she is afraid of what this man would do to her. It has now been seven years since she ended the relationship, and this man is still stalking her. She describes this man as rich, influential, and even with contacts in the U.S. government. He also threatened her to not go public with her story and not to mention his name. He is the one who wrote the email we quoted at the beginning of this episode. I'm happy to hear you are going to the US. There, I will be able to really take care of you and your ugly cult. Also, several other people we asked to tell their story for this episode said no. They said, this man is dangerous and I don't want him to come after me and my family. He also wrote to other people involved in Torben's ministry. Yes, I also received a message from this man uh, back in 2020 when on the TV in my home country, in the Netherlands, there was a program that was very similar to the program in Denmark. The program is basically the same. It has Torben, it has the child abuse, all these lies are also in there. And after the program, I received an email from this man who is hiding behind a fake account, Laura Palmar, and he writes, once I told you I'm not the kind of guy you're used to deal with. And he ends with, more to come, get your suitcases ready. Always making sure to not mention his name. I forgot one last thing. Don't you ever mention my name on any social media. I will know it, and I promise you that you will have serious reason to fear my wrath 
Obviously, Alice didn't tell you everything about who I really am. Don't try to learn it the hard way. You would regret it deeply. Am I clear? Somewhere in 2016, Gabriel and Thomas found each other and joined forces. Several other fake social media accounts appeared. Their sole purpose was to spread defamatory information about Torben and his ministry. They created a narrative where Torben's ministry was a cult, and Torben was the dangerous cult leader. Besides the fake profiles, anonymous reports were sent to various government organizations in Denmark. The fire department got an anonymous call that there was a fire hazard. They checked, and everything was fine. The food control came. They got a report that the kitchen at the Bible school facility was dirty and there were rats. They checked and everything was fine. The Workers Association got a report that there were people working at the ministry that were not authorized to work. They checked and everything was okay. The tax agency was told that the ministry was evading taxes and they requested the books for the last two years. Everything turned out fine. A Wikipedia page was also created with defamatory information about Torben. Wikipedia moderators decided that the page needed to be removed. When Torben was doing a kickstart in France, the police showed up. They had received reports that Torben's ministry was a dangerous cult and were investigating the matter. People got baptized and free, received the Holy Spirit, so beautiful. And in the middle of the most beautiful thing, the police come. Three policemen are standing outside and want to close us down. And they say something with the building and the man who owns the building, but we know it's just an attack. And what to do now? We have no idea. <laughs> 800 people, we have no idea. After we showed them all the paperwork and, and they saw all the people, they never came again. And we were able to move on with the kickstart with no problems. It didn't stop there because as soon as we went to the airport to fly back to Denmark, um, the police came to check all our bags suddenly again, and they took us all into a special room. Um, it was very strange, and they went through all our bags, all our stuff, and just opened and took stuff out. And, and we just had no idea of what was going on. And then apparently they told us that they got a report for someone that we had a lot of money, a lot of cash in our bags, and it was just strange, very, very strange. And of course, we didn't have anything, so they didn't found it, and then in the end, they let us go. But it was just, we started to become very curious about who this person was, because it was like, it kept coming again and again and again, that someone would call in to the police and ask them to check us and to go through us, because we were dangerous and, yeah. But anyway, I mean, Torben never really wasted too much time on it. He was just so focused on the gospel, so he moved on. In the month of April, I actually did a kickstart in Switzerland in a city called Lausanne. During that time, for what I remember, uh, I was excited and we were preparing uh, to start with the kickstart. Uh, one of my friends, she actually came to me and she actually told me in a surprising way that uh, there are police who are outside of the building. They had a document and um, someone had made a big complaint about Torben Sondergaard, about the last reformation, that we're a sect, um, something to do with um, oh, that... Um, autistic, autistic and hypnosis. Hypnosis, a whole lot of things. And we are dangerous. Yeah, it was from some place near Geneva. We don't know, it was not signed. Over the years, these people have continued their mission and through their fake accounts, they have been clear about their goals. We will continue until Torben and his ministry are completely destroyed. Hey, Torby boy. I have to say, I am really enjoying watching you slowly going down. Soon, there will be nothing left of your freaking cult. Maybe you should have listened to me when I asked you for help for Alice you arrogant moron. When Torben was approached by a production company in 2017, he had no idea that Gabriel and Thomas were involved. Towards the end of filming, Torben realized that he had been betrayed and that the film crew was in contact with his persecutors. 
When he found out, he called the producer. He confronted him with his dishonesty. The producer excused himself and said it was part of the journalistic process to hear both sides of the story. But was this fair journalism? We have received information suggesting that Gabriel, the businessman from France, paid the salaries of the undercover journalists you saw in our last episode. The source of this information is someone close to Gabriel. If this is true, then Torben's persecutors have helped fund God's best children. We contacted one of the journalists. He said that he felt sorry for Torben, but that for legal reasons, he could not answer our questions. When we watch the God's Best Children documentary, we see the presence of both Thomas and Gabriel everywhere. For example, we see a representative of the organization Inside Out. According to their website, Inside Out provides support to people who have broken with a destructive community. Their website lists Thomas as chairman of the organization. Benti Bolsarup, who we saw in our first episode, is also listed on the Inside Out website as a child specialist consultant. These people are not independent experts. They know each other and work with Thomas. In the program, we see this couple who criticized Torben. They are friends of Thomas and were under Thomas's influence. When asked why they agreed to appear on the program, they said that Thomas asked them to do it. They share a misleading story about Alice, the ex-girlfriend of Gabriel. So are you worried for her life? Yeah, I've been since the first day. We also see this man talking about his friend. He appears at the end of the last episode of God's Best Children and his identity is not revealed. This is Gabriel. He is the man that has been stalking his girlfriend Alice for years. She has repeatedly told Gabriel to get out of her life, but he continues to pursue her. And since this thing started, um, everything collapsed. She can actually commit suicide in, in a blink. If nobody is here to see what's going on, everything can happen. And they don't know what they're doing. You know, it's, this last reformation thing is like a mental institution where patients are trying to help patients. They're all crazy. She can actually commit suicide in, in a blink. Gabriel says Alice could commit suicide in a blink. But here we are today, four years later, and Alice is fine. She is not part of Torben's ministry and never has been. She just followed one of Torben's Bible schools and is now part of a church in her home country. He was um, doing all kinds of things to have contact with her, even though she blocked immediately every possible door. He kept finding another door to just try to have contact with her. He were also sending her flowers. He um, tried to have contact with other students at the PTS school, as well as create uh, multiple Facebook uh, profiles. Typical, it was female uh, pictures and names he was using. She was really done with this guy. She didn't want to have anything to do with him. Uh, she didn't even consider to go back to him. And she just wanted him to leave her alone. She decided to follow Jesus with everything she had. Around the time Torben realized that the production company was working with his persecutors, he and his family received a visit from the municipality. They had received a report that children were being abused in their home. At the same time, a YouTube channel linked to Gabriel uploaded this video making the same claim of child abuse. It was a very threatening situation because in Denmark and other European countries, the child protection authorities have a lot of power. Sadly, there are several examples of authorities making bad decisions and removing children from their parents based on false information. This was a very intimidating situation for Torben and Lena. 
because these authorities have the power to remove children if they suspect any wrongdoing in the family. Sometimes I get up to three calls per day from people fearing a forced adoption of their children. This became more real when Torben was publicly declared guilty. We agree with children's condition that this kind of behavior can be described as psychological abuse. It was likely for authorities to take action at some point. Now, do you see the pattern? These individuals pushed the government, but also the media, into unjust actions. Later, we will see the same thing happening in the USA. After the programs aired on Danish TV, Torben and his family fled to the United States. Seeing the ongoing discussion in the media and government, they concluded, these people that are persecuting us, they are not going to stop. The people of Denmark buy into their lies, and this will continue until I'm in jail. Torben was advised to apply for asylum. He did not know that his persecutors had already contacted Homeland Security. A memo we received states, on March 27, 2019, the ICE Homeland Security Investigations Fort Myers office received information that Sundegard was defrauding the sick and elderly and abusing children. But why did Torben end up in prison in the United States? And how were Thomas and Gabriel involved in this? That we will share in our next episode.